What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our playthrough of Stalker Clear Sky. Now this is a little bit weird for me because I don't very often do this, but this is one of those games I was going to move on to Call of Pripyat because people seem to very much like my Shadows of Chernobyl playthrough and I had a lot of fun with it. It was a game that I'd never had the opportunity to complete and yet by putting it on the channel it forced me to complete it and you guys seem to have a really really good time with it with the complete mod. Today we're going to be playing Clear Sky which is a game that I skipped in the series. I've played Pripyat and I've played Shadows of Chernobyl, never finished either one of them, but I always skip clear sky because it got sort of lukewarm reviews and so I figured the best way to go through it we'll install the complete mod and we'll play clear sky and hopefully we'll have a good time with it I have no idea what's awaiting us right here this is 100% completely blind which in the year 2015 is kind of an odd thing considering this game came out in like what 2007 maybe I have no idea when this game came out still I wanted to play it I had an inkling and so I figured I just put it up on the channel it's really no hair off my back or no skin off my back anyways whatever material you want to take off my back to just like turn on a recorder and talk while I play the game that's basically what I do anyways even when the recorder isn't running so why not let's play some clear sky complete shall we I'm gonna jump straight on into the game because I think there's probably gonna be quite a few cinematics along the way that tends to be the way this thing functions we're gonna go I don't know stalker last time wasn't that difficult so let's take it up a notch we'll go veteran this time and we'll to see what happens. In actual fact, we have nothing to worry about. According to our research, the next emission will not occur for at least two months, four days, and seven hours. Its intensity will be 3 on the Bergman scale, which is Without going into detail, I must say I have never seen anything like this before. The encephalogram suggests serious damage to the nervous system. But the other indicators couldn't be better. It's... It's astounding. Perhaps it has something to do with the emission. Most certainly. Although so far I've been utterly unable to formulate a rational explanation for this abnormality. Oh, Hooray, we were rescued by Professor Beanpole 5. I don't know how much confidence I can have in a man with that name. You're not only Professor Beanpole, but you're the fifth Professor Beanpole. That means there's been a long line of beanpoles in your family. Eh, whatever. You're away. That's good. Welcome back to the world of the living, Stalker. How are you feeling? My head's splitting, and spinning too. Basically, I'm in real good shape. Do you remember what happened to you? I remember leading an expedition through the swamps with a bunch of scientists and then the emission and that's it. Where am I? Is this heaven? If it is, why does it look so much like the zone? <laughs> in the joking mood, eh? That bodes well for your recovery. I'm Lebedev, the group leader, and I'm responsible for everyone here. That includes you, for as long as you're here. We call ourselves Clear Sky. And you are in our base right now. We picked you up in the swamps after the emission. You've also got a commanding mustache, and so, obviously, that right there, that's a top lip writer that elicits some form of respect. I don't know what that form is. Eh. Alright, I guess I got lucky then. Lucky? Hmm. I doubt it. The facts are these. You survived the emission. That's the first thing I still can't explain. The second thing is that our patrol found you in the swamps, which are essentially endless quicksand. And thirdly, you nearly got torn into shreds by a pack of pseudo-dogs. But our boys got you out just in time. Such a chain of events tells me it's more than just luck. Anyway, I need to finish what I'm doing. 
So let's continue this conversation later. Dot, dot, dot. That's how you read that, right? That's the proper way to read that? Eh, dot, 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 dot. The computer blue screened out. You might want to patch that. Just saying, if this is part of your medical equipment, might be a decent idea. If my heart monitor blue screens out. That does not make me feel confident about your medical skills. Oh, good, we actually get to play the game now. That'll be pretty fun. What is this thing over here? Some kind of weird ray gun they were pointing at my head. Huh. Looks like it's made out of rusty junkyard metal. Bed rolls. Is there anything I can loot in here? Thought there was a coin at the bottom of that jar for just a sec. It's the wishing jar! Go forth to the wishing jar and may all your wishes come true. I don't know what the hell that is. It's like some kind of apparatus for... I mean, it looks like it's got a sink underneath it. I assume that in some way it probably produces water. Oh well. Off we go. Can I turn on a light or anything right now? I haven't played the game in a while, so this playthrough may have a little bit of a rough start as I remember the controls. It's been about two months, maybe, since we broke off our Shadows of Chernobyl playthrough. This time I'm going to try and get a good ending, though, because a lot of people were disappointed by the ending I got in the last one. I didn't know that there were multiple endings, and I had never beaten the game before, so unfortunately I stumbled into one of the crappy endings. And it ended up going up on YouTube, which made me very, very sad. Can I walk on this meshwork right here? Oh, I can. Wow, that is really, really sturdy meshwork. Okay. Figured I'd fall straight through. We have guitar guys. Hell yeah. That's like one of the crowning hallmarks of Stalker. Guitar guys sitting around just chilling, being like cheeky breaky yo. Okay, well, should I, well, how do I get back up here? Here, let me back up inside of here. Up and yeah. And then do it. Is there, wait, how do you get to the second floor here? There's no stairs. Does it only have external access to the second floor? What? Hold on. This construction is definitely non-stand. Oh, there it is right there. There's the stairs. See? I knew there would have to be stairs around here somewhere. Otherwise, this just don't make no sense. Like some kind of weird MC Escher base. Are you Lebedev? Who are you? Oh, it's Beanpole 5. I'm glad to see you, young man. You look considerably better. I've seen all types of folks in the zone. Some come here chasing their dreams, some in search of the zone's wonders, and some are just looking for loot. Why does clear sky study the zone? People are mistaken in their belief that they understand the essence of what the zone truly is. Some consider it to be a universal evil, others a wonder sent down to humanity, and others still consider it no more than a source of riches. They are all wrong. The zone is impossible to understand when viewed through the prism of human perception. Moreover, it is far too early for humans to even try. Ergo, the actions of both the government and stalkers with respect to the zone are misguided, and I fear that the potential consequences may be, or indeed are, completely unpredictable. Naturally, this represents a terrible danger. I don't think I'm down for like a philosophical conversation about the zone right now. I just want to get into like shooting stuff. Alrighty then, bye. If you need me, you'll know where to find me. Well, I'm glad that you have an open door policy when it comes to needing you. I'm sure that you're satisfying, but I need to go. Who was I looking for? I gotta talk to Barman, I think is what they said. So that guy looks like he's tending bar right there. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's running a very lucrative business. Little bit of a downer. I don't know if I ran a bar. Oh, you sell gas too. Well, that might be why. It's a fuel slash bar distribution service. Liquor and, I mean, the liquor might be the fuel. Who knows? Back from the Hello, Mark. You became quite a legend while you were out of it. Even you wouldn't believe some of the rumors I've heard. <laughs> Anyways, here's a drink on the house for a lucky son of a gun. It should help you relax and tell me about your adventures. Because I'm just dying of curiosity. The music that he has in the background right now is like the standard music from every doctor's office waiting lobby ever. There's not much to tell. I was leading a group of scientists through the swamps when an emission hit. I remember nothing after that. I regained consciousness here, so now you can tell me what happened. Well then. You drink and I'll tell you about this place. It used to be pretty quiet here. We had the paths worked out, the right places explored, and the approach covered. Of course, the swamps ain't exactly spring break material, but it wasn't too bad either. Yeah, it wasn't too bad until the last emission. The biggest we've ever seen. These days our boys pray both to God and the devil before going out of the base. Was getting back alive is a miracle in its own right. But we're managing to hold it together, because our guys ain't here for loot, they're fighting for a cause. Oh, I fight for a cause too. I fight because I want to get rich. I fight because I don't like that guy's face over there. How'd you end up here? 
collecting bottles one after another, and they let me hear. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. The uh, truth is, there was no place for me in that other world. They didn't want me. In the end, I came here. First to the zone, and then to Clear Sky. The guys here are all right, and I'm needed here. They come back here after a mission, I pour them a drink, tell a few dirty jokes, and my job is done. Simple, but effective. By the way, they call me Cold around here. Okay, uh, about this place, would you give me a clue as to where we are? In our base. As you can see, it's a small, sinking farmstead in the middle of romantic, endless swamps. I couldn't tell you where it is exactly. But it's the last place in the zone where you can meet real people. Guys who won't screw you, stab you in the back, or let you bleed to death to save a med kit. I don't think I've ever heard somebody describe a swamp as romantic before. I've heard like dingy swamp, I've heard like musty swamp, but romantic, not an emotion that you typically tie to a swamp. <laughs> I'm no stranger to the zone, yet I've never heard about Clear Sky. How do things work here? You know why you've never heard of it? Because too many people want to know about it. And the fewer that do, the better. Lebedev is our leader. Man is a rock if ever I've seen one. He's the glue that holds our whole group together. Then there's Binpolev. Professor Binpolev. He's like a walking encyclopedia and a calculator in one. Knows more about the zone than... Well, anyway. Our technician's called Gray. And he can make you a rifle out of an empty can with ammo to boot. He could use some spears, but uh, apart from that... And finally, we have Suslov. He's a traitor, but he ain't like the others of his trade. He won't try to rip you off or screw you. Call. He knows what stuff is going with your dirty jokes. I need to see that. him. Well, brother, if Libedev says he needs to see you, that ain't up for a discussion. Go on. I'll catch you later. I see you. Just a minute. All right, so we gotta go talk to Lebedev. I like his name; it's fun to say. Additionally, the waveform for that part, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, you guys aren't gonna be able to see that, but I can totally see it right now as I talk and as I'm recording things. I have like a waveform running on my other screen so that I know that I'm not like peeking out and things like that when it comes to recording my audio. And when you go Lebedev, it looks really, really awesome. I mean, I might do it a little bit more as we go up the stairs. It doesn't really help you out much, but it makes me happy. And when I'm happy, I make better episodes. So you know what? Lebedev. All right, so it says he's downstairs. Never mind. Okay, so we got to go down a floor. I like how it actually marks things in this game. That's a little bit different from the previous game where sometimes the markers were a little bit arbitrary as to where your mission objective was. Are you Lebedev? No, you're not Lebedev. Ah, there he is. Mustachio man. Let us chat. Got some fresh air? You look better, that's for sure. Let me fill you in on this situation. You're in the clear sky base. Don't try to remember who we are. You've never heard of us, and there's a very good reason for that. Our mission is to research the zone. We believe that the zone must be studied and understood so that humanity knows what it is facing here. Understanding is the key to coexisting with the zone. Because if you think about it, the zone is the most wondrous phenomenon humanity has been confronted with in its entire history. So why are you hiding? As I said, we are researchers. We are trying to figure out the nature of the zone, determine the reasons which caused it to appear, and formulate the rules that govern its existence. We are not consumed by a quest for money. We don't seek fields of artifacts, and we're not interested in turf wars with other factions. That is why we're hiding here in the swamps and concentrating on our research. Our forte is not combat, but knowledge. Knowledge of the zone, accumulated over years of research. We know more about it than stalkers and the government combined. And our research was finally shaping up into a sound, coherent picture until the massive emission a few days ago. What was so peculiar about it? I've had emissions before. No, that emission was incredibly powerful. It was on a level of its own. It was like a hurricane that swept the whole zone, changing it. Everything is different. The well-known and relatively safe areas have become highly radioactive and full of anomalies. But now, you can access parts of the zone that have been unreachable for years. Even the most hardened stalkers don't know what awaits them on their favorite path. The other thing that changed is people. And that became evident right away. The emission destroyed the fragile balance between factions, and they're now warring for territory. In other words, many strange things have happened, 
and I don't yet fully understand the scale of these changes. It's only been a few days since the emission. If you ask me, the strangest thing of all is that you managed to survive it. So basically, it's launch day for an MMO in the zone right now. Like, we all knew how beta went down, and we were all in alpha, and we knew everything, but then everything changed with the MMO launch, and now it's all crazy, and everybody's back to, like, level one and fighting over everything. Gotcha. leba deba deba dev If I knew how I survived, I'd tell you in a second, but I don't remember anything. I see. How can I help you? Well, I'd better leave. I'm pretty beat up, but I can still walk and hold a gun. How do I get out of here? Getting out of here isn't easy, not by a long shot. The swamps are a real maze of reeds and radioactive quicksand, swarming with terrible monsters and human scum. And I don't know which is worse. Only a guide can lead you safely out of here. We only have a handful of them. Guys I would trust with my life without a second thought. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. Because if I let you go, our presence here might not stay a secret for long. You're trying to have an awesome Christmas where nobody knows what they're gonna get. I get it, you gotta hide your presence sometimes. What are you trying to say? We're having a very tough time here recently. The emission reduced the number of anomalies in the swamps, which made the area easily accessible for bandits and other vermin. There are so many of them, they'll be setting up camp in our base soon if we don't do something about it. The problem is that we're not really the fighting type, so we've been steadily losing ground. But you, one look at you, Tells me you're a pro in that sort of thing. This is the second outpost. Your We're experience can save We're the lives attack. of Help. many of my... That's enough chit-chat. There's been another attack on our outpost. Help us fight it off. If it makes any difference, some of the boys who saved you are there right now. You still remember how to survive in the zone? I remember bits and pieces. Great. Get over to the trader and he'll fit you out with some basic equipment. After that, head straight to the outpost. Once you're outside the base, listen to my advice. I'll try to guide you along. I'm just letting you know that if your armor isn't made by Abercrombie, it doesn't touch my flesh. I have class. My name is Scar. What? That's the most awesome thing ever. We're a Disney villain. This is the greatest. All right. Now that I know my name is Scar, we've got to be a badass. There's no way. Roger that. Ah, I called it. Awesome. Let's go talk to the traitor. But either way, our character's name is Scar, which is pretty cool. Hopefully we get, like, an army of hyenas later on. That would be amazing. Although I don't like hyenas. I've disliked hyenas pretty much my entire life because I watched a nature documentary one time where hyenas came and they kidnapped a lion's kitten and ate it. it. Sucked. And I've hated them ever since. At last. Here, take this basic equipment kit. It's designed specifically for patrol missions. Okay, so we got Parabellum, I think. We've got 1270. I don't know what 1270 is. Did he give us a Makarov? What did, okay, so he gave us a Makarov. We got ourselves a baby Mac that we can hold down with. From what I've heard, though, this game is a lot more difficult than the first one, so I'll probably play it really, really slow. Anti-rad drugs, first aid kit, bandage, echo detector, knife. Oh, we got a shotgun. Okay, so the 1270. Oh, it's a shot round. Okay, so it's got to be for the shoddy. All right, thanks. Hey, is it always this stressful around here? I've been ordered to issue you some equipment. There's no time for questions. The boys need you now. Well, fine then, comrade ninja. I guess I'll be out of here. Let me take a look. I think F1? What was the key in this game to get to the menu? There we go. It was the I key. Wait, I have a... Since when do I have an AK? Do I not have any bullets for it? What? They start you with an AK? I don't think it uses 545, though, and I don't have any 545, so this may not work out so great. Where are my guns at? Where are my guns at? Can I not take them out in town? I would like to pull my guns out right now. Hey, buddy. You're marked on my map, so I assume I'm Tell supposed to be talking you to you. Already. All right, I'm getting to it. I'm talking to the audience. Calm down. So are you ready to go to the outpost? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's go. Why not? All righty. I'll blindfold you until we get there. You're walking me into a war zone blindfolded? No wonder you guys are losing a war. You understand, I'm sure. We must keep the roots secret. Yeah, whatever. Oh, I only have 30 bullets. Okay, so... I've got my Mac, I've got my bullets, I should probably, should I equip the shoddy instead? I don't know, I only have 30 bullets and that makes me feel kind of nervous, so that makes me put my gun away. Alright, I gotta get a feel for the control. There are anomalies ahead, be careful. Remember, don't move until you've thrown a bolt in front of you. Yeah, I think bolt was 6 or something like that, and then binoculars were 5 so you could mark people. 
And so, in this game, if you've played any of the other Stalker games, you already know what I'm talking about, but for people that are new to the series, in Stalker, they give you a weapon called the Bolt. It's essentially a normal bolt that you would throw, and it comes, I don't know where we get so many of them. Apparently, we have, like, a backpack full of bolts. I don't know. I'm not going to try and explain it, but you see that thing right there that's called an anomaly, and they're all over the zone. It was caused by the radioactivity and, like, supernatural saturation that occurred when the zone got created by the Chernobyl meltdown. And so, anyways, we throw this over here, and what'll happen is it'll turn red and fiery if it hits itself an anomaly. And so it should help you work your way through without getting killed now This is one of those games where you very rightfully so want to quick save like a lot to make sure that you survive You die a lot in stalker, and I've heard that in clear sky that problem persists where you're probably gonna die quite a bit Let me throw something out that way. Okay, so there's nothing over there. I think there's one right there. Yeah, there it is You can sometimes find artifacts in anomalies You can't see them, but detectors spot them easily enough if you get close enough, your detector will indicate the location of the artifact, and then you just pick it up easy as pie. Keep in mind that your current detector isn't exactly top of the line. It only shows the distance to the artifact. Okay, so what detector are you talking about? Is it up in the top left-hand corner, I think it is? It'll say like 22 or something like that? Either way, we need to be careful over here because I hear a gunfight kicking off. I don't see any other anomalies, so I'm just going to move real slow. We don't have any cover right now, which means that this is essentially a death trap that I don't want to participate in. But I don't know who's shooting right now. Let's just move real slow. It looks like we regenerate, which is actually kind of a blessing. That'll help out over the long term. I don't know if that's added by the complete mod that I have installed. I know that Clear Sky, a lot of people complain about the fact that it's not balanced very well, and so I installed the complete mod before because the complete mod made Shadows of Chernobyl fantastic, and so I assume it does the same thing for Clear Sky. What are you shooting at right there? Additionally, I haven't found any artifacts yet. Can we walk in water without bad things happening to us? Oh, good. I don't see any other anomalies. Just to keep trucking here. If I can't make it through the first episode without firing a shot at something, I'm going to be frustrated. Oh, he's... Okay, the the to the tower we go. Ascend the tower to the top we fly. Whee! You're, you're right on time, bro. I'm real low on ammo, so let's make the best of it together. Okay, well, I'm going to take your extra box of ammo because I can do that. Can I help shoot these things? Here, can I... Oh, good, we can aim the boomstick. That'll be fun. Yeah, get dealt with, giant crazy monster. Looks like some kind of like bull boar. Any mission is approaching. Get to cover now. Oh man. So wait, what do I do? Either way, I want all your stuff. Give me all your stuff right now. Oh, that was my stuff. Never mind, I'm an idiot. Okay, so let's go down this thing. I hate ladders in video games. They never work right. Especially when they're really high off the ground. Oh, ass. Looks like our character has the same problem as the first game's character. He's always blacking out in random places. Hmm. Deja vu. I always felt like there should be like a Street Fighter character that shot a fireball. He's like, deja vu! Deja vu! I don't know. That's what it always sounded like to me. When I was a little kid, that's what it sounded like. It reminded me of kind of like, oh, okay. You know, same thing. Whatever. Let's not talk about it right now because I feel like an idiot. So we blacked out again, and now we gotta talk to- What was the point of that then? Was that just like a little tutorial stage? I don't know. <laughs> they made me walk out there, and then they made us just black out and come back? What? You survived the emission again. I'm not even that surprised. Our boys picked you up not far from the tower when things calmed down a bit. You know, Bien Polev was right. You defy scientific explanation. He believes that you acquired some, let's say, unusual abilities, which help you survive anomalous activity that would literally tear anyone else down to atoms. Also, it looks like something is increasing your body's performance in several areas, to the point where our monitoring equipment goes off the scale. Wefe, don't get too excited. There's always a fly in the ointment. Every emission harms your nervous system, and if this continues, you will die. Hmm. I feel nervous about the fact that my nervous system is under attack. Is that ironic or just coincidental? A normal emission is the release of energy accumulated in the zone. A discharge, if you like. But what's happening now is completely different. In my opinion, 
the increasing regularity of these emissions is the zone's response to some sort of serious threat, akin to the response provided by a human immune system. It is difficult to rationally explain coexistence between humans and the zone. The zone tolerates us in some areas and forbids us from going to others. Whatever is beyond the scorcher and further towards the center of the zone is taboo, a place where stalkers are not supposed to set foot. I think that recent events in the zone are related to the fact that someone broke that taboo and made it past the brain scorcher. So somebody got past the scorcher. What risk does that pose for the zone? It's hard to say. To answer that question, I would need to know what's in the center of the zone. Some say the monolith, others say the wish crater. The more unpretentious ones dream about fields of rare artifacts. I was at the power plant myself, a young specialist at the time, but I don't know what's there now. What I can say is that the Scorcher appeared for a reason. It prevents the center of the zone from being reached. People cannot go beyond the Brain Scorcher. Is there a real way to pass it? Or even a theoretical one? I didn't think so until the large emission. Hell, nobody thought so. However, if you consider the emissions to be a defensive reaction, then the answer is obvious. Someone made it through the scorcher, and the emission was the zone's response. And since the emissions haven't stopped, whoever it was must still be alive. The zone is trying to get them, and it's killing everything that's alive in the process. So what are the dangers of frequent emissions? I know a lot about the zone, but I can't share everything with you. You'll just have to trust me on some things. A system, any system, needs to be in equilibrium. The zone is unstable right now, and this instability is increasing. If the constant emissions aren't stopped, the zone will become so unstable that a new disaster will occur. Which brings us to what Clear Sky is doing. We are trying to prevent that disaster. Prevent it? You're not even strong enough to fight off bandits. You're right. But we do know how to prevent a disaster and stop the emissions. And that means something. Well, lots of confidence you got there, so what's the plan? We have to find out who was in the center of the zone and stop them at any price. All right, bribing people. I'm down for this. And why are you telling me this, of all people? There's a strange connection between you and the zone. On the one hand, every new emission gradually kills you. On the other hand, you survive in situations where others don't stand a chance. My gut feeling tells me that your abilities, your gift, your curse, call it what you will. They mean you can get through places that others wouldn't even dream of. And at the moment, we need to act very quickly. Huh. Not sure I really want to jump into the thick of things. Why do I have to take part in this? Because we're dying, you idiot. Why would you even ask that question? I knew you'd ask that. The answer is simple. If the emissions aren't stopped, your nervous system will burn out and you'll die. Help us and you'll save yourself. Now this may sound like a line from a corny movie, but you really don't have a choice. <laughs> corny movies always come from Iowa. Anyways, let's, looks like my options are pretty limited. Unfortunately, yes. So, will you help us? Hell yeah, let's shoot some fools. Then listen carefully. We have made use of all our contacts and connections in the zone. As a result, we know that a certain stalker at the Kordon was asking Sidorovich about some very strange components. That's all we have for the moment. But it's a lead. All right, it's fine. How do I get there? Through the swamps, of course. How else? But remember what I said. After the emission, a whole army of all kinds of scum turned up in the area. Now they control almost everything. We are under siege, and I'm not exaggerating one bit. So before we can help you get to the Kordan, we have to regain control of the swamps. And with your help, I think we should be able to do it. Understood. All right, so that's going to be the end of our time here in the first episode of Stalker Clear Sky. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today for the first episode. Hopefully we'll be able to jump in and do the second episode, have a little bit more action, I suppose. I will see you all there. I do, everybody.